this is a good spot. Good afternoon, open source community, and welcome back to beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. We are midway through our three days of coverage here at KubeCon North America. My name is Savannah Peterson, as usual, joined by Rob Streche. Rob, we were just talking about F1. I know you're a fan uh, of I, open source and F1. I, I, and there's so much open source with F1 and so many supporting companies that are here that are F1, but cars in general now, a lot of open source and a lot of Kubernetes technology and yes. cloud native technology as we've talked about we have many times, over, over the past couple weeks, so. Yeah, yeah, in Amsterdam even way back yeah. when at your first show yeah, for yeah. theCUBE, if you remember oh, that. Yeah, a year and a half. Throwback. Yeah. Speaking of F1 and world class, I'm so excited to welcome Suda back to the show. Thanks for coming to hang out. Hi. It's so Hi, nice to have you. Great to be back. Yeah, I know, good to we see had you. you in Paris and that was fantastic. We get you back again. I knew we were going to have you back, so I, was, <laughs> I called that one. You were, you were so good and lovely on the show last time. I'm really excited to talk to you. Oracle just made a huge commitment to the open source community and announced a donation. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so last year when we were at Chicago, we announced the $3 million per year for three consecutive years. And uh, this year we're so proud to actually announce people have used it. Everybody from like the graduated CNCF projects like Kubernetes, which is of course celebrating its 10 year anniversary, to you know the Linux Foundation itself using that software, uh, using those credits for building their training modules, which means as more people come on to CNCF to learn some of these things, they learn about how to use all cloud providers. It used to be an AWS shop not too long ago, yeah. and now they have expanded to OCI given our free credits. So uh, it's been wonderful to see partnership from bottom up, like training new people, graduated folks, and a lot of the incoming incubation projects also using the credits to grow their ecosystem, uh, uh, of course, uh, for free. Well, <laughs> and that's, I mean, first of all, that's awesome. What a great program and, and, and commitment to the open source community by Oracle. I'm curious, have you noticed any patterns or trends in the, in the projects that are coming through and using those credits, or is it everybody? It is everybody, but obviously, you know, we are here, the most happening things around AI, and so naturally, a lot of the new incubation projects, I'm part of CNCF board as well, and so we do see a lot more incubation projects in the AI sector, and all of those, almost from the get-go, use Kubernetes, like they, they don't know of anything else. This is the, this yeah. generation of uh, the community coming in, and for them, Kubernetes is, is how you do things. It uh, is the platform. Uh, Isn't that interesting? It, is, it yeah. is the platform. Like People don't talk about VMs and computers anymore. They talk about containers and pods. Uh, and that's been very interesting. So everybody that lands on that Kubernetes platform, because of the uh, the kind of integration we have with CNCF and the easiness of how to use those credits, it's not a lot of paperwork. And so people get to use it freely, explore. And what's so interesting is because we donated ARM credits, it's actually benefiting the community. We are seeing a lot more projects being ARM certified. Something that was not there a year ago when we gave this grant. So it is making the ecosystem a lot more open and fair to all of the players in the CPU and GPU space. Yeah, I, I, I think again, I, people don't maybe realize how much Oracle Cloud infrastructure is actually under the hood cloud native or open source and Kubernetes. Yeah. Kind of give us a feel, because I mean, you've got your pulse on, I mean, you're on the board here, yes. but you're also, you have your day job. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and so you get to see how both of those kind of come together in that intersection. Yeah, so uh, in my day job, on top of managing the Oracle Cloud's developer platform, I manage our container and Kubernetes and serverless platform, which is very, very core to some of the things that we're talking here, right? And how has it evolved? You know, um, Oracle Cloud itself is about six, seven years old. Um, and when we, so given that Kubernetes is 10 years old, when we started taking on this journey, even within Oracle, there weren't a lot of Kubernetes experts or even users. Didn't know where it would be applicable and where it would not be. Today, in the last 12 to 18 months, every single Gen AI service that Oracle has released is built only on open source technology, only on Kubernetes, Slurm uh, where it's needed, but everything from the Kubernetes ecosystem, so 
new stuff, Kubeflow, Volcano, Q, you name it and our developers are getting used to starting from there, which is very different for how software in Oracle used to be developed even like you know five, six years ago. So it's been an exciting journey to see Oracle come through with the use cases for how to use open search to solve our problems fast, no, no redoing stuff that has already been done by the open yeah. source community, and provide that value to our customers really quickly. What's also been fascinating to see is, you know, GPU, as everybody's talking, is like super expensive. It's of course expensive for us too, right? And so nobody wants to, quote unquote, reserve GPUs and then keep them reserved without running any workload. So how do you get this kick started, quick start? What do you, so we have built AI Studio for our internal developers to quickly kick start on the Gen AI services. Do the most where you are differentiated. Don't worry about infrastructure, don't worry about past. You tell us, like model hosting, everybody doesn't have to build their own model hosting uh, you know, platform and architecture. We do it for them. You can pick, in fact, we allow them to pick from Hugging Face. We allow them to pick any open source models and we will host it for those developers. So it's, it's a really nice ecosystem that we're seeing inside Oracle. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, leveraging off of, I got to be at uh, Oracle Cloud World and you know, what, a, what a show that was. I thought what was really interesting was you know, the 51 different instantiations of AI and the different fusion apps yes. and things of that, all being built on top of this infrastructure. I won't go into Larry talking about getting rid of passwords. I thought that was, <laughs> I, I loved his rant on that. That was freaking awesome, well, but. You know, we just launched all Oracle employees today are on passwordless platform, so it's not too far away. Yeah, I, I, which, I'm so here for that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really I, talk about something that will surprise and delight people that might not have known they were interfacing with an Oracle system, or you know, it's, it's a nobody likes it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. I, I, I thought that was awesome. Do you so, like you were saying, for the internal developers and how Oracle is using open source? What like projects do you, you see being used internally to kind of build out this infrastructure to help out? So we see two kinds of projects. You were talking about how SaaS applications have added Gen AI for free in what they provide to the customer. It's not an add-on, it is not something you opt into, it's there for you. When you upgrade, it's there. So we see development happening in that layer where we can provide direct customer value without actually telling the customer or requiring to tell the customer what's under the hoods. How did we give you the data that we gave you? Right, you just, you open an email, you click a few things, and you know, orders get placed, things start getting shipped. That is what people want. They don't want to know what technology powers all of this and how complicated it is. Nobody cares. Yeah. Exactly, right? So, so yeah. that's one layer of development that's happening. And then there is the sort of the past layer, which is where things like AI Studio, what can I do for ML Ops, how can I make it easy for developers who are actually working on the Gen AI services, not so much of the value add, but the central piece that other SaaS people can then use, the verticals, you know, document understanding, vision services, that layer. And then the bottom most layer, this is where I think Oracle is, you know, on the cutting edge, on the innovation side. Um, uh, I am sure you heard our announcement that we are building the world's largest supercluster, 131,000 nodes and over. At that, that is some scale. Exactly, yeah. and at that scale, simple technologies like cooling, like you know, air conditioning, cooling, does Yeah, it's got to be go to nope. water cooling. Yeah. And yeah. Liquid yeah, cooling, yeah, yeah. right? Liquid and cooling only, yeah. maybe, on that, yeah. Exactly. And who would have thought that you know, we are software developers, we're all cloud providers, right? Now we're talking to power companies saying, okay, how do we do this liquid cooling at this scale? Not only that, you know, uh, we're also very environmentally aware. I think part of our ARM deal was exactly that, right? So these GPUs consume a lot of power, but guess what, they only consume power and they're running workloads. Right, and yes, everybody wants to optimize the time they run the workloads, but it's not 24 by seven. 
So instead of the power company providing us with the peak power for 24 hours a day when you don't want to use that, how about we tell the power company, you know, this is how we're scheduling. So the ecosystem that's growing to make GPU sustainable as an infrastructure, because we are predicting that by the year 2027, this would be more than a hundred trillion dollar market. And so what are we, if we don't start looking at the environmental effects today when it's not that large, it's not going to take the impact that we want it to take when it becomes that large. So we're really trying to focus, and this is pure innovation. This is like, we, we don't know what's out there, what more can be done. So it's a very nice, in my opinion, integration of hardware with this kind of software and power and things that we would never think uh, you would need to do as a cloud provider. So those three areas are where you know, we're seeing innovation. I'm really glad you brought up sustainability because it matters and we Absolutely. don't have any of this any of this in this room, quite frankly, if we if we don't have sustainable power and, and we can't continue to scale any of this if we don't. You're talking about liquid cooling, we're headed to supercomputing next week. I suspect your team will be down there as well. And, and one of the companies, I think, or there's a company in Denmark that's using all of the water, all the liquid cooling, and, and after it goes through their servers, it then reheats, it heats the homes of people in Denmark. So they're leveraging that to create the full ecosystem. And as you're talking, and, and I, I promise I'm going to tie this back to CNCF, <laughs> but as you're talking, I'm, I'm just thinking about these, these more holistic ecosystems. Yep. It's not just components or a solution or a platform or a developer. We have to be thinking about the entire experience from, from where that power comes from to the end user, which is really exciting, and I know that this must matter to y'all internally, and I love having you on the show because you bring such a great perspective. So your role as a board member at CNCF, as well as doing everything that you're doing at Oracle, how much do those Venn diagrams overlap in terms of your ability to tap into the community and get feedback and learn from the open source community? So um, it, it overlaps in dimensions, like you said, that I normally can't think of. It's, it's almost, um, you know, per use case basis, if you were to say, yeah. sometimes it is about, oh, you know, I didn't even know Oracle did these things. So it's right. about that, you know, showing people what we have and what we can do. And then in other cases where we're like, oh, you want to use our product, but it's an ARM and this thing doesn't support. So then integrating with that open source community with those you know, sustainers and telling them, you know, what how can we do, what can we do to help? These people want to come onto the platform, but they can't because this is not supported. On that's on one side. On the other side, things like as any board, right? Budgetary constraints. I'm part of the budget committee as part of the board as well. And so where do you spend the budget? We, when we talk about places like this, we do get to determine how much of reusable stuff, like you know, you saw, pro hopefully you had lunch here, yeah. and you saw all the sustainable uh, materials that we're using. Every little thing matters, right? And it's, it's about what the board believes in. What are the values? And that's where the intersection is. A lot of what the CNCF board believes in, which is openness, giving the innovation back to a wider community versus keeping it as IP, uh, you know, safe and secure. And Oracle believes in that openness. As you hopefully have heard, we were the multi-cloud pioneers. And now, finally, we've gotten AWS. It's taken a while, but we're there. Right. And, and this, is, this is what is going to drive a lot more of let's share our thoughts and ideas to do better for the bigger community. Right? The, the things that not one company, one person, a few people can interact. I love, I did not know about the dead market. I will definitely go and uh, research that. But we ourselves are trying to reuse the water that we yeah. um, are using to liquid cool for other purposes within um, the within that data center, cool. but this is next level of uh, it's, I, I can send you the interview so you can get in touch with them. Yeah. It's super exciting, and it's the stuff that I, I love these stories and narratives, and, and even your enthusiasm in the way that you're talking about this. You know, when we, when we bump into the AI doomers, if you will, it's so nice to be able to say, hold on, wait a minute. What if this actually creates an entirely different future of sustainability that we haven't been able to think about because all of these services and things were siloed? Exactly. Yeah. And you know, as we grow into this hyper 
could scale, like, you know, once upon a time, uh, and I am talking once upon a time like it was decades ago, <laughs> even a few years ago, right, only cloud providers were thinking about high scale. Now, today right. with GPUs, everybody is talking about 10,000, 20,000 super clusters. And so imagine if this became norm right. with the way power consumption and everything works around GPUs, if you don't optimize, this is not going to be good for the environment and nobody wants that. Yeah. So, yeah. And it won't work. Yeah. We don't have infinite we power. We don't have, yeah. exactly. So we'll just exactly. Run Virginia, our heads Virginia's already out of power. I mean, there's which no more data, center, data centers being built in Virginia yes. because they're out of, oh, out of powder, uh, uh, which is Yeah, tell us crazy. about that. Yes. Realize that. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's craziness. I mean, but so I, I think one of the things we love to talk about is especially with your viewpoint from being at Oracle and with the CNCF board, is what are you looking forward to to be able to say in London and in Atlanta next year? What, do you, what are you, as you look across the horizon, yeah. what do you hope to be able to say when you so get there? I hope to be able to say that we have found a way to efficiently use and harness the power GPUs have given us. Efficiency in two ways. One, of course, being able to use the hardware to do the training and you know inferencing that you want. But two, efficiency in getting the business value out of Gen AI. Today, Gen AI is a cool technology. Almost everybody out there wants to be associated with Gen AI. But then what does Gen AI bring to your space? Yeah. What can it help your customer do better, faster, than without Gen AI? That's how people should be thinking. Right now, they're thinking about what Gen AI can I leverage? It should be the other way around. I am trying to solve this problem, now tell me what Gen AI fits this problem space. I hope by the time we are in London, we are able to show certain companies and certain customers having gone through that journey quickly, faster than 12 months, and be like, you know, we started using this in three months, we saw this big change in whatever the business problem that they're trying to solve with Gen AI is. I love this. Yep. I hope that we can have those, those community members, those customers of yours on the show with you next time and say, hey, we hadn't even started doing this when we were in Salt Lake City. Yes. Here we are in London. That is so exciting. I could talk to you all afternoon, but unfortunately <laughs> we are out of time. Thank you so much for hanging out with us again. You are a, truly a highlight of these shows and, and the passion with which you speak about the community I think is, is remarkable and, it, and it's also a, a gateway. I hope if there's other folks, particularly women, I know you're a part of the Oracle Women's Group yes, as I well am. And, the, and the Seattle leader, I believe, if I recall <laughs> correctly, which is awesome. Shout out to you and all, all the teams there. I, I hope the folks watching today get excited and start diving in because we're so early in this revolution. Absolutely. That there's time and space for everyone, particularly here in the cloud native and KubeCon open source community. So welcoming. Anyway, thank you a lot. And thank you, Rob, as yep. well. This is a fun one. You always got some secret aces up your sleeve. I, with those try, I try to keep you on your toes. I know, I like that. I like that you surprise <laughs> me with the data sometimes. And I hope you're all surprised and learning lots of things at home or wherever you might be watching our three days of coverage here in Salt Lake City, Utah at KubeCon North America. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE the leading source for enterprise tech news.